Hey guys, welcome back to our next installment on our uh, Raspberry Pi. Um, hopefully this time the audio will be uh, a little better. I know last time we had a little bit of problems with the audio and the quality and it being loud and soft and everything being crazy. So hopefully I've got that somewhat fixed. I'm experimenting with different microphones uh, just to see if I can't get it a little better before I get my really good one. Um, next month, uh, so uh, you just have to bear with me. I think I'm back to my old microphone. I think it does the best for picking me up and for everything else. So sorry about the the noise. The kind of, it has it's kind of noisy though because it's not real great. But I mean, at least at least you can hear me and it's loud and clear and it works okay. So um, until I get the the better one, I think I'm not going to experiment anymore. So <laughs> anyway, we're going to go ahead and set up our IP stuff uh, as well as our VNC server. Uh, for this one. So first off we need to give our Raspberry Pi a static IP otherwise you could take the chance on it pulling a different IP every time you power it up so we don't want DHCP we want uh, static so I'm going to show you how to do that now so that way we can SSH to it and that way we don't have to have a separate keyboard and monitor like I'm using right now to uh, configure it. We can configure it from um, just any PC basically. So what we're going to do I'm going to go ahead and log in um, as Barry, and now we're going to get our prompt. Okay, so first thing we need to do is we need to change directories to the file that we need to edit. So we're going to use cd for change directory forward slash and then an etc and then network. Okay, so that gets to the network. So if we do a quick ls to show us what's in there, you should see there's a file on the right hand side. If you see there, it says interface. So that's it. If we type more and then interface we'll get to see what's in it. Right now it's configured for um, if you look down about third line down it says iFace ETH0 INET DHCP so it's configured for DHCP we're going to edit that and change it to our static and put in our static information so in order to edit it you need to use an editor and you need super user access to do that so uh, basically administrative access uh, like in Windows sometimes when it asks you uh, that it needs administrative privileges so to do that we say sudo for those of you that don't know Linux commands which is is super user um, we're gonna type in nano which is the one is the editor I'm going to use there's a lot of different text editors in Linux there's also VI and there's another one that I can't remember the name of but it's a GUI based one for this one um, I, VI is a little more for advanced users um, it has a lot of keyboard shortcuts and things that uh, make it uh, if you're when you get into an advanced Linux programmer it makes it a little easier to fly through because you just use keyboard shortcuts but for beginners I really suggest nano because it works just like kinda like a word pad or like if you're ever playing in DOS prompt um, like the edit command it's basically a simple editor so we're gonna use nano for this one just keep it simple for now so we are gonna type interfaces because that's the file we want to edit hit enter That'll bring you bring you up bring up nano and now we can edit it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna take out this DHCP and we're gonna put in uh, static. Okay. Now we also need to add a few other little pieces. Um, now we need to say address and I tabbed over is what I did to get it to come over. Address we're gonna type in the static that I want. Mine's a 192.168.1 network, so we're gonna Oops, I'm going to type in like 30. Good enough. And then I need my net mask, which is the subnet mask. So I'm using a slash 24 subnet mask, so we'll type that in. Then the next thing we need is we need to type in what the network address is, which is 192.168.1.0 because that's the network address for my network. We also need the broadcast address which is the same thing but with 255 on the end since mine's um, that and that's that's just networking so 192.168.1.255 then we need the default gateway so it's gateway and mine is 192.168.1.1 okay now everything looks good what we're going to do is if you notice in the bottom left hand corner there's a deal it looks like a caret and an x that stands for control x that's to exit so we're going to hit control x it's going to ask us if we want to save it we type y for yes 
It's going to tell us what file name do we want to write to. Well, it's interfaces, so we just hit enter. It says wrote 14 lines, which means everything wrote properly. And if we want to check to make sure, type our more command, interfaces, and we see that all of our stuff has been in. Now, in order to lock this in, you have to restart. So we're going to type in sudo because you need, uh, or sudo, we need uh, administrative privileges to do this, and reboot. Now, it'll take it a minute, and it should reboot. Wait for it to reboot here. Okay, there we go, get our screen. All right, and there's the boot sequence. So now it's going to reboot the software. Um, once it comes up, we'll verify that we can, that, that all of our settings are still there, that that file still got the information we put in it, as well as we're going to do a few ping tests. We're going to see if we can't ping the PC I'm going to use to SSH to it, as well as see if we can't get the internet. Okay, we're booted. Uh, Raspberry. Alright, give us our prompt. Okay, now we're going to do a ping. Um, I'm going to ping the computer that I'm going to use, which is located at dot ten, and looks like we got it. We're getting replies, so we're good. Now, for a ping test, normally it doesn't do like the normal four packet one that Windows does. It'll just ping forever unless you put in an option to tell it to ping only so many times. So to stop this, you hit Control C for cancel, and that stops it. So, just so you know. Also, let's try the internet. Um, Try Google, let's say. Make sure that works. Looks like it's replying, so we're good. We're all set to go. So that's pretty much it for this piece. I'm going to stop the video for a second and break and go back, and we're going to see the, uh, whatever it is, see, see uh, the SSH stuff and see how that works. So we'll see you. Uh, I'll see you in just a minute. Hey guys, all right, I'm back. Here we go. Um, I'm on my, uh, my PC now. So now I'm going to show you how to. Um, set up the VNC server and how to SSH to your Raspberry Pi. I'll put a link in the description to this program that I'm using. I'm going to use the program Putty, which is basically a kind of like a terminaling application, but it allows you to use Telnet, SSH, pretty much everything. That's what I have right up here. Um, Putty is a freeware and it's very, uh, very, very, very useful. Um, what we're going to do is we're just going to open it up um, and it, make sure SSH is, can, is selected and type in our IP address that we uh, set our Raspberry Pi in the previous step. Once you hit enter, should bring it up, and there it is. It says login as. So here we go. We're going to type in our login, which is Pi. Type in our password, Raspberry, and we should get logged in. Okay, there's our prompt, just like it was before. So okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to uh, set up our uh, VNC server. So in order to do that, what we're going to do is we have to install uh, the VNC server, which I'm going to use the tight VNC server. Um, so in order to use that, what we're going to do is we're going to type in uh, sudo again, apt get, which that's the application or the program that will go fetch uh, uh, the VNC server software that we need and install it. So we type install, so sudo apt get install and tight VNC server, all one word, hit enter. And it should go find the find the dependencies and all the information, and then it'll install it. I've installed this once before, just playing around with it to uh, to to make sure that I get all the steps correct for you guys. So it's going to um, it's going to skip over the the deal. It tells you it'll tell you how big it is and how much memory it's going to take, and it asks you if you still want to continue. You just type Y for yes and hit enter, and and then it'll do what you're seeing now. It'll go ahead and set it all up. And I'll show you the command also for setting it up. Even though I've set it up before, it remembers it. Even if you remove the package, you have to actually go in and delete all of your settings um, manually. Uh, so it, it, I won't. It won't probably take me clear through the setup. But what you type in is you type in uh, v. Uh, no, you type in tight VNC server once it's done installing and hit enter. And what that'll do is that'll bring up the setup. And what the setup will do is it'll actually see right now it's just it went ahead and started a session. What it'll do is it'll actually um, ask you for a password. You have to set up a password for your VNC server. So it'll just ask you for a password and ask you to confirm it. Mine, I made mine uh, Raspberry uh, because it has to be uh, no more than eight characters long. So it, I did it as R A S P 
P B E R R. That's what I did for mine. But you know, you guys think up your own. But anyway, you, you'll ask for a password. You set up your password, and then um, to create a session, I, it looks like it went ahead and created a session for me. So um, I'm not going to use that. I'm going to use uh, session as zero. So to do this, you say VNC VNC server. And then you're going to put a colon and the session number. I must call this session zero. So you can actually have multiple sessions, which allows multiple connections to it. Um, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to have one session. So we'll do colon zero for that session number. But you can do zero, one, two, three. I can't remember. I think there might be a limit, but um, I, I'm just going to do session zero for right now. I'm just going to connect to it once. Then we say, oops, geometry dash geometry and what this does is this allows you to pick a resolution so whatever resolution we want if you want a high def resolution it's 1920 uh, by uh, 1080 but I'm not going to do that I'm just going to do something simple I'm going to do 1024 by whoops by 768 you also set your color depth by doing dash depth and I'm going to set 24 for 24 um, bit color once you do that you hit enter it should bring up and say that it started. Yes, new X desktop is Raspberry Pi Zero. So now our session is running. It's ready to accept connections. Um, now you need the Type VNC uh, client is what you need to connect to. I'll put a link in the description um, on their website. I think it's TypeVNC.com. But in the I'll put that in the description and go download the client software. And what it does, I'm gonna go ahead and click it. I've already yeah, downloaded and I've already connected to it. This is your VNC software for going to the uh, the VNC server. So what we're going to do here is we are going to um, set up or we're going to look at our configuration real quick just to give you an explanation of how this works. It's got a uh, port set is 5500. What that is is really it's port the port number is created of 50 550 is to start with, but then the last digit is going to be your session number. So it'll be sessions. If I'm doing zero, so it'll be zero. Uh, if it was session one, it'd be one, two, it'd be two, so on and so forth. So that's what mine's 5500 because I'm session zero. So that's that. Basically, all we're going to do is we type in our IP address here. Um, I use just default connection options. That's fine. And then we're just going to hit connect. And then it's going to ask us for our password. So oh, we're going to type in. Oops, bear. And there we go. There's our desktop session. So now you have basically full control of your Raspberry Pi, just like if you were using a separate monitor and keyboard, but you have control of it from your PC here. So that's pretty much it. Um, you can click on anything and do anything like that. One last thing I want to show you is when you when you close out of this, to close out of this, um, you, you don't have to go to log off. That will actually shut down the, uh, the Raspberry Pi. Um, what you can do is you just close your session and you're still SSH'd to your Raspberry Pi so you can still use that. Um, how to how to get rid of a session or close the session is you use the kill command. What you do is you say VNC server and then hyphen kill and then colon and then the session number. So session 0 is the one I did. Kill. And there we go. Now that session is closed so if we basically try logging in again it's going to give us failed to connect to server. See? So that's how you close your session. So to open it, you say VNC server and then colon zero, and then you type in what you your your geometry and your depth. And then to close it, you type VNC server hyphen kill and then the 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 number, the session number, colon the session number. Well guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial on uh, how to set up your IP and your VNC server. We'll be looking for new stuff coming, uh, some better stuff uh, that we'll be doing with uh, probably programming, probably touching on some programming in it. They use Python is what they use, which is very uh, good for beginners, for beginner people wanting to get into programming. Python's a very good language, very simple to use. So we'll probably be playing with that as well as uh, some other stuff. I also have a personal thing that I'm going to use this for once we get done playing around with it here on YouTube and I'll probably show you kind of some insight into how I'm going to what I'm going to do with it which is kind of pretty cool so what I'm going to do with it in my house. So anyway as always guys uh, like comment let me know what you think um, give me any comments feedback that you want any questions you have feel free to send me a personal message or just leave something in the comments um, I think that we're probably 
going to have some good fun times with this. So stay tuned. There's some cool stuff coming. And with that, guys, I think that ought to do it. Take care. Thank <laughs> you.